Yo, yo, yo. What's, What's up? Going on? What's happening? How you feeling? Yeah. Brandon? I'm I'm feeling great. Brand Brand or Kiwi? We got Kiwi. How you feeling today, bro? Yeah. 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 It's very, it's very man day over at first choice. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought Kiwis would normally be like outgoing and excited. Yeah. See, though, I, I, the way I look at Kiwis are that like they look so good and then they're just disappointing. Are you looking in a mirror or? Oh, oh. oh they're Kiwi. Oh. I'm confused. I'm not really, I'm not really sure if that was an attempt at an insult, but if it was, I, I didn't understand. I'm, I'm just playing off the me, fact that you are a Kiwi today. <laughs> yeah, and you know, tomorrow you or just Sunday will be kiwis. something else. Very I'm just boy. saying the Kiwis are disappointment. So if you think that I'm a disappointment, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll just say what you said and what I'm, you are. Personally, as right I think, now, I think Kiwis go well together with strawberries. So I mean, like it's like eh, until like it gets combo. Yeah, with sure. That's good. Strawberries are like sweeter, and Kiwis just kind of like I feel like. I don't know. It, I would enjoy kiwis more if they were a bit sweeter and they didn't taste like plastic. Oh, I, I, I don't know about it's that. It's a I, I, great texture, plastic. but like except for <laughs> all those plastic. like little <laughs> tiny seeds that just get stuck at every part of your mouth. But like, yeah, texture's good. But then like they just they just don't really taste like anything. That's fair. I really can't remember the last time I had a kiwi. Honestly, I don't think that's something I normally just get to eat. Toss I mean, I don't buy them, but like my sister likes them, so my mom used to. Like it's not in like a. Does get them. It's not like, in like a fruit, fresh fruit salad usually, unless yeah. it's. I mean, not the kind I'm I'm taking, but. I don't occasionally, know. when I go home, my mom will just have a few of them around, and I look at them, and I'm like, ah, I remember those aren't that good. I'm big on the uh, kiwi artificial flavor. I know Brandon likes yeah. the flavoring. Yeah. But I don't mind a nice. Strawberry kiwi. Strawberry kiwi smoothie. Those things are crazy. Mm-mm-mm. I'm not much of a smoothie guy. Oh. You ever been a tropical smoothie or no? You yeah, but that. I don't know if I've ever gotten like a fruit smoothie there. I've like gotten like two things there. Fair. They have like a chocolate coffee milkshake there. Uh, that is. I never heard of that. That's crazy. Legendary. It's enough to kill you in one shot though. So. Oh, good. I might have to try that tomorrow. Word. All I right. don't know. That, I kind of like cut stores like that out of my. Because of sugar? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exile and sugar on this podcast. Respectable. I'm Pretty not. much. So I you don't drink weight. any alcohol that has sugar? Or do you just like you, you what? dabble in sugar? I mean, I'm not like, I'm not a huge drinking fan. If I'm going to drink, I'm going to take like shots. Fair. I'm not much for like. Sipping on a beer for yeah, that's hours just not, to get it's not to where me. you're going to get with two <laughs> like, shots. Like when you left those like couple beers at my house, Brandon, like I, I drank them just because, but like I wasn't really happy about it. Well, those are, those weren't like beer, beer. They're, they're I don't know. It's like a uh, seltzer, but still, I still seltzer, don't think yeah. they're good. What were they, like White Claws? Um, truly. Well, truly, yeah. Ooh, I can respect them. I've like, never had it fan. before. I never had like, before I tried it. That was the first time. Not that bad. It's pretty light. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're 5%, so like, and they're small cans, so like, they do they the taste trick. Good. Just, I, I don't think they do. I'm just not much for that taste. I mm-hmm. don't like it. Yeah, it is favorite. pretty bitter. But uh, anyway, probably should have said started the episode off with this, but we're doing the uh, NFC South quarterbacks, tight ends, and defenses today. So... I guess kick back, relax, enjoy this episode of uh, First Choice Fantasy. That's right. Word. Uh, anybody else got any comments? This division is – I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is the most stacked fantasy division. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the agree. league. Richie commented, I think, on, like, AFC West uh, division, and he, he asked if this was the most star-studded position. Or the AFC division. West was pretty good. That was the other one I was thinking about in terms yeah. of, like – Yeah star equity but i don't know this one's pretty hard to beat i think that's one literally all every around. position so yeah. the thing is the yeah the like the afc west only like I, I i guess they have better tight ends than i was originally thinking but like this this division has pretty solid tight ends at every option they've got star running backs they've got probably four startable quarterbacks depending on how you feel about bridgewater and like yeah. a bunch of receivers that's true the defense is the only thing that is questionable but at that point i mean i don't really 
Yeah, but you know, screw defenses. Yeah, now I'm dabble on defenses. Exactly. Honestly, we probably should have cut the defenses out, but oh well, we'll live. Um, eh, too late. Any other comments, concerns, questions from the first choice fantasy cast? Uh, a little spoiler here: when we do like conference rankings, uh, I think we should just cut out the defenses. Yeah, we're planning on. Yeah, I think yeah. we should cut out because like yeah, who defense. gives a shit? Yeah. Honestly, most of my redraft leaves, I think I'm going to cut out defenses just because it's it's pointless at that point. I'm 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 a huge fan of that after watching last year where everyone who had the Patriots defense was just kept afloat for like the first eight weeks. Yeah. And then it, they came back to earth and like every fantasy owner that had them like missed the playoffs. Yeah. I, I know quite a few people that like I'll bring up this and like, oh, that happened to me, you know. I ended up missing the playoffs, started out 7-0. and oh, you know, Okay. Makes perfect sense. And people drop good defenses, like, yeah. all the time. I, I ended up with, uh, in my redraft league with uh, 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. And they – I mean, they came through big time. Yeah, it was annoying last year. I got stuck with no defense in the Dynasty League. And I was just like, how hard can it be to find a defense? And the answer is apparently pretty hard, which is why I had to trade legitimate assets this offseason for defense. Not that it's really going to hurt me. Yeah, looking back on it now, a uh, recommendation for everyone who's uh, new to Dynasty, I I personally recommend no defenses. That's something that we kind of made a yeah. mistake on with our first one. But uh, I, I feel like defenses should just yeah. be cut out all fantasy. Leagues. In fantasy in general, They're yeah. Too I, random. I tried yeah. doing the IDP one year. I just – it was not fun. It's too much. Actually, I had fun with that. I can't. I, I did a league where instead of defenses, you had like – I think it was, like, two linemen, two linebackers, and, like, two DBs, and then a flex for defense. That was actually so pretty much. fun. That is so much. Oh, oh, yeah, it's great. Also, like, it's it's great to see, like, the value that, like, linebackers start taking. If you get, like, a solid <laughs> tackling linebacker, like, Luke Keekley was valuable than most RB2s. It was nuts. Really? Golly. Oh, yeah, because he'd get, like, 15 points a game. It was nuts. I or, like, remember. pass rushers. Stud pass rusher, like a J.J. Watt, easy 20 points a game sometimes. Oh, speaking of which, I remember playing in IDP League and J.J. Watt had like 32 points one game. It pissed me the yeah. fuck off. Oh, 32 That's, points from one oh, defensive player. It was player. probably when he scored a touchdown. On when, a strip uh, sack, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, sacks gave you like a bunch of points in that. Yeah, I mean, anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand, I guess, and cut to the end, <laughs> possibly. Screw that. Let's get cutting. Let's get cutting. I said, baby, I am not the one to play with. Ain't the type to give up. I'm driven and motivated. I just want some recognition and some compensation. But this ain't about the money and it ain't about the fame. I got lightning in a bottle. I think I just found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes? Bitch, it's burning now. Lightning in a bottle. I think I just found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire? Before we get back into that, I just want to say something real quick because this is nuts to me. And in that fa- in, in our league, Ed, I, I advanced it, and my running back, who finished with like five total touchdowns the last game, did not win conference player of the week. Instead, Elliot did, who scored twice, and they lost. Really? I am bitter about that. Like, That's my man wild. scored five touchdowns in a playoff game. And that <laughs> was like, nah. Wait, wait, wait. Did you tra- did you advance to the conference or advance to – Yeah, no, just to the conference finals. Did you play a game yet or no? The conference final? No, I, I have not yet. Word. All right. But, I probably won't get to that until, like, Sunday night possibly. But, yeah. All right, it's fine. I mean, I'll play it at some point, but I'm not really in any rush. Word. Brent, you all out on that league or what? I think I'm pretty out. I can't play users. I get destroyed every time. I haven't been in a fucking playoff with Madden 20. I'm tired of it. I don't think that the users are your issue. Computers are your issue. It is. You were pretty decent in the first quarter against me, and then that changed real quick. It always happens. Everyone always freaking adjusts. And then I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. If Daniel Jones isn't healthy by the Super Bowl, I'm going to have serious problems against you. Who's your quarterback? It's Taysom Hill right now. He's trash. 
Oh, please. He destroyed – he went off against me. Brandon, the only reason he went off against you is because it's really easy to go off against you. All right, Taysom Hill is awful. He can't he throw. Off. His accuracy is terrible. Like, I I basically have to – look at this, medium throw accuracy, 73. <laughs> That's worse I, than, like, I, Cardell Jones. Oh, my – he's awful. Like, I – out routes and, like, stuff like that are a huge staple of my offense, and I've had to completely cut them out since he's come in because every one of them, he either underthrow he either overthrows them or he throws a pick six. It's terrible. Speaking of Taysom Hill, though, do uh, – Brennan, would you – oh, you deleted it. Never mind. You had Taysom Hill at five. because no one else had him. <laughs> no, why thought, would we have him? I don't know because they're actually used. <laughs> well, I mean, is that yeah, with the re- – Right, but Brandon, am I thinking, would you ever start Taysom Hill at no. quarterback on the off chance that he, like, scores three touchdowns on gadget plays? I should put him in as running back in the running back. Oh, my God. Just to compare him to, like, those players. I once tried to see in our uh, sleeper league that if we could change Taysom Hill's position, like, to running back so that I could cha- trade him to Matt. But the app, the app would not give me – like, would not allow me the commissioner powers to change Taysom Hill's position. I was actually pretty pissed. <laughs> it's like, why can't I make him a flex player? Yeah, that's very shot out. I mean, that might have just created issues if, like, Winston and Breeze went down and Hill started a quarterback and, like, Matt was then able to start two quarterbacks. That would be insane, yeah. But you know what? We would have dealt with that when it happened. Chances of that happening too are probably slimmer than. Yeah, probably not very yeah. high. That was my thinking. All right. Uh, anyway, do you guys want to dive in these quarterbacks real quick? We're diving yeah. in some old quarterbacks. Let's go. Yeah. Except for Teddy Bridgewater. He's. Oh, no. Tom Brady's pretty young too. All right. But His soul is old. Okay. Who, Brady or Bridgewater? Brady Bridgewater. What? What? <laughs> you said Teddy Bridgewater is old? His soul. No, you just it's said old. Tom He's Brady old is soul. young. Was he like 27? I don't know, but it feels like he's been in the league since 1975. I think he is. No, I mean, but you said your words were Tom Brady is young. Yeah, he's like 27. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not all really right. sure what you're talking about, but all right. <laughs> Let's cut that BS real quick. But for real, though, uh, I guess we can hop into. Uh, explaining why I have Drew Brees at three. I guess I could do that compared to They're the other They're all two good. Teams. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I don't think there's a whole lot separating them. Yeah, there really isn't an explanation at hand. Like, I, I could be convinced to take Ryan over uh, Brees. And Brady was kind of my wild card because he performed pretty decently in New England with no weapons whatsoever to speak of. And, like, you know, now he's going somewhere where he's got a bunch of weapons. I'm just like his arm strength and or lack thereof concerns me. That's fair. I don't know. I just see a very uh, high touchdown. High touchdown. Oh yeah, absolutely. From Brady, and I mean, obviously, that's going to impact his performance a lot. And I feel like, honestly, I don't know if I believe in Drew Brees all that much. Obviously, his weapons and whatnot are beautiful, but I just, I don't know. I, I think like he's still got time in him. He does. Especially I mean, from a regular season standpoint. Yeah, and I obviously wouldn't feel uncomfortable feeling having any one of these four as my starting quarterback. I mean, Bridgewater slightly just because the unproven that's there, but I mean, I believe in uh, Joe Brady. So. My thing is like I think Judge will or not, not Judge. I keep mixing those two up. Like you said, I think Joe Brady will help their offense. That offense has not the greatest weapons, but they're pretty solid. Yeah. So, like, you know, and I, I think it's an offense that Bridgewater should, I, I would think, be able to have success in. For sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's probably going to run through McCaffrey. So that, to me, puts Bridgewater at like a solid fourth on that list. Also, considering the fact that Bridgewater is allergic to throwing the ball down the field. But if you think but, about this, this is the only thing that, I like, I'm fine with Teddy Bridgewater as a quarterback because of this. Like, if he does do like check downs or whatnot, you're checking down to somebody like you're you're checking down to somebody that's not like anybody else, Christian McCaffrey, instead of like a Ronald Jones yeah. or like Keyshawn yeah. Vaughn or something. Yeah, I mean like that's that. that is a that's a clear it's a benefit. So honestly, like I was thinking about it. I mean, obviously these rankings are very 
click with. Like they can just change, especially yeah. for me personally. But I could honestly see Teddy Bridgewater finishing at the top. Like it doesn't really – any of these four don't – eh. They're all just – like they blend together. But they're all good quarterbacks. I, to me, I, I will take the other ones just because I think the other ones are better quarterbacks overall than Bridgewater, whereas to me, if Bridgewater is going to finish at the top, it's because of the weapons around him. Yeah. Because, I mean, like all the play, like McCaffrey, Moore, Samuel, Anderson, yeah. even Ian Thomas to an extent, you're talking about guys that can pick up yards after the catch, so that should help them. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, I believe in the other guy's arm talent more. And game script more would probably definitely personally – what the hell were those words? They would definitely yeah. favor the Panthers more than, like, say, the Buccaneers or something like that. Like, that Buccaneers defense is actually something. Like, it's decent. Yeah. Secondary is a little eh, but, I mean, the run, the ability to stop the run and just overall quality of the defense, plus you have a quarterback who isn't really turnover prone, I guess you could say, in Tom Brady. I mean, I don't know. I feel like game script's definitely going to benefit Bridgewater the most out of all four quarterbacks. I agree. I can see that with the Falcons, too. The Falcons' defense is full of a bunch of guys that you've never heard of. Yeah. Plus, I mean – the oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Brandon. Well, I, I don't want to get too much into it because, I mean, let's face it, there's not much to be said about defenses, so I want to save what I have to say till, till the we defenses. get to the defenses. Uh, yeah. In, like – Ten minutes. Yeah, probably yeah. five ten minutes. <laughs> it's gonna be a shorter episode besides the intro. That intro was like at least five minutes long. We gotta Something make like. the intros epic. Sorry. There was Confuse like our listeners. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> they they pop in. They're like, wait, is this a podcast about vegetables and fruit? Oh wait, no, it's about beer. Okay, first choice. <laughs> first choice beers. Beer? I don't know. Oh wait, football. That's there why go. there's a football in the center of the screen. I put we're it not, together. We're not the best yeah. beer podcast. Ed just turned 21, and I'm not. He's not. FBI, FBI. Anyway. Um, Send him. So, did you say Ed – I mean, Brandon did remove Taysom Hill from the rankings? Yeah, he I did. did. Okay. Can I just point out that, heart. like, if Breeze were to get hurt for whatever reason, uh, Jameis Winston is an absolute must-add. Yeah. Yeah. That's I don't know any of the other backups, but who cares? I mean, honestly, I don't want to be that guy. Well, I, it's not really a guy, but I don't want to be this way. But Jameis Winston, before Bruce Arians came into town, like he wasn't a good quarterback. Like, he isn't a good quality quarterback, but talent-wise, obviously. Oh, you'll never hear me call him a good quarterback. I think he's a good fantasy quarterback just because of his willingness to throw every single pass always. But but they, and, go ahead, Brandon. Go ahead. They also have Sean Payton. That too with New Orleans. So I see what you're you mean, but once you look at the other coach across and shit, the- like, can you imagine Michael Thomas's stats? If like, and now, now granted, Breeze always throws to Michael Thomas, but good God, Winston would average like forty five targets to him a game. I just feel like the passing volume of the Buccaneers' offense last year was insane, and it's he's never going to be able to get an offense like that ever again. So I mean, I feel like that's what really pushed him over the top because the fact he had 5,000 yards and 33 touchdowns like he had the ability to still you've seen him throw 30 interceptions and 30 touchdowns first ever but what I'm saying is the fact that like say his plays get cut in half say his touchdown totals drop from 33 like say he plays a whole season on the scheme whatever whatever but just the volume is going to cut like in half I don't think he's ever going to be another good he's never going to have another good fantasy quarterback year at least (laughs) Right now, maybe, I think he could. maybe if something changes, yeah, something changes drastically. But like what what I seen personally in the first couple of years, like I think he finished best quarterback sixteen, and like I'm never gonna have that on my roster. Maybe as a bench quarterback, like second string occasionally. But I mean, he finished quarterback twenty two like three years out of four. It was just man. I I could see Sean Payton letting him rip it a little bit. Fair. And plus, uh, I mean, if you. Look back on the Buccaneers and who they had. They they never really had a, a star running back with Winston, at least not that I can think of. So I think possibly the fact that it's not all on his shoulders, he's not having to force throws. I mean, this is – I think he just would force throws because but, that is his nature. That is his nature, yeah. Which is beneficial from a fantasy standpoint. It's not very beneficial from a, you know, winning games standpoint. Yeah. 
And I'm one to believe that the volume of the offense last year is what made him a good fantasy quarterback. Because before that, oh, I mean, he was it, still had the, yeah. the trigger happy. Like I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Like, remember that game? I think it was either week six. I think it was week 16 where he threw, like, three interceptions or something like that in, like, the first quarter. That, the first half. Like, didn't he throw, like, an interception on, like, the first pass? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, th- and he turned and he turned that around in a hurry because yeah. he just kept throwing the ball. It's was, it was great. Week 15? I mean, something like that. I know it was at towards the end of the season because I yeah. was counting on him performing. I believe I remember it was I the was week a... that I benched Carson Wentz for him in the fantasy playoffs, and I got or I benched him for Wentz for Wentz and got fucked over. But yeah, I remember exactly where I was when I looked up at my phone and saw that he had already thrown like two interceptions, and I was so pissed. But then, like, you know, I have a little patience. He he rec- he uh, corrected the ship. Yeah. Right, he got going. Was it against New uh, New Orleans actually? He had four interceptions against uh, the Saints. I don't you know, I think it was against Detroit. Passing attempts. Detroit was Seems week like... 15. He only Seems had like he only had one interception against Detroit, though. Not so. bad. It wasn't that game. Did they play week 16? Houston, and he had one touchdown, four interceptions. Yeah. It may have been week 14 against the Colts. He had four touchdowns, three interceptions. That's probably a 37 fantasy points. How many, uh, how many points did he have in the uh, Houston game? 15. This, is, uh, <laughs> this has zero beneficial to our, to our viewers. You know, 15 no, nobody isn't that cares. bad. No one fucking cares about who scored what for your team. isn't that bad after you throw like, Even three a quarterback interceptions that's in the first 15 ranked. seconds. I mean, honestly, people probably clicked on this video to hear us talk about Tom Brady and how he's going to be good again. And you no, know, we're talking about. But I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't want to. Tom Brady. Talk about that. Let's talk about Tom Brady and his uh, cast around him. Beautiful. Better than New England. Oh, yeah. Ten times better. Sure. We've already covered that. Tight ends? Yeah, let's get to the tight ends. Yeah. Relevant wise, what are you guys saying? You guys saying like startable, like weekly starter, startable tight ends? For all uh, of them, I say a lot. I say yes, but OJ Howard, I think, is a skeptical. Uh, I'm a number wise. Like, how many of these tight ends are you taken? Like, as you're starting tight end. Oh, like, uh, you, I'm gonna talking? say, I four ish. I'll take Hurst. I am higher on Thomas than most people are. I think. I mean, Cook should be solid again. And I think between Gronk and Howard, you're going to get a passable tight end. The issue is that it's probably going to be difficult to roster both of those guys. And think about Bray, too. Not trying to say that he's any ta- more talented than any of these players. But, I mean, like, I don't know. I, you've seen him do things in Tampa Bay. And it just kind of, like, it scares me. Like, he's going to be utilized as a third tight end. That's three tight ends in the rotation. That's kind of wild. I think he'll be, like, a red zone. He'll steal. I think he'll snag. Like touchdowns. I mean, but or, if you have if a healthy anything, Gronk and OJ Howard yeah. and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, then why are you throwing to Cameron Bray? Yeah, that's why I'm saying most likely it being like a three tight end set towards the towards the goal line, and then. I mean, I could see I could see Bray taking red zone snaps from OJ, and getting like mm-hmm. like a touchdown vulture from yeah. OJ Howard. OJ Howard. They seem to hate OJ Howard, so honestly, I could see anyone taking snaps from him there conspiracy conspiracy maybe buccaneers hit up uh brady and was like okay uh we're looking at trade oj but if you come to tampa bay we'll keep him and he can become your new gronk and we'll get you gronk think about this gronk and another gronk i agree with that look at that and they kept him and they kept them healthy I don't know about that. Uh-huh. I agree with that. I mean, the Patriots, obviously, there's, there were reports years ago, last year, about how O.J. Howard was, like, on his way to the Patriots, you know, trade yeah. reports, all this. And guess what? Tom Brady was like, oh, hold up now. It's I like, want no, him he's there. not going up here. I'm yeah. going over there. Yeah. I'm, that go is the sole reason season. he signed there. Yeah, I OJ. mean, I saw OJ reports Howard. saying that Brady knew he wasn't coming back to uh, Patriots. Yeah. After, I think, last year, he was like, that's why I saw I don't know what to believe with any of that because, like, I don't know if Brady had his mind made up about that ever. No, I don't know if 
I feel sure. like it, did he ever tell anyone this personally? Well, no. I mean, you can't do that because yeah. then the leaks. Yeah. I don't know. I really think shit like that happens. Like, not saying that this this actually happened because. Yeah, I mean, it probably does around, happen. But I think shit like that. I think it happens for sure. Shit like what exactly that he would have known as soon as the season ended that he didn't want to come back. Well, he probably blocked an OJ Howard trade, and he was like, he. I don't, I don't know about Block. He probably gave his two two cents. Said like, yeah, like keep the him shit wrong. Yeah, keep him, and you might have a a better chance of getting me. Yeah, probably, possibly. I I see. I just don't know if Howard really had that much impact in that. But interesting thought, I guess. I don't know though. I I like Howard. I don't think he's a. He's got the physical ability to be. Gronk, and yeah. I, I, I am choosing not to write him off yet, especially. I mean, with I'd the probably rank him who, second if they didn't sign Gronk. I don't. He's not Gronk. Let's get let's get that out of the way right now. He is not Gronk, and don't even say he well, is. Physically, no, but I think Brandon. I'm personally making the comparison to fantasy points. Like I'm not even looking up physical. I mean, he's okay, a very yeah, large, like points. mobile tight end. So like, he's very athletic. He's an athlete. Fantasy tight end. Yeah, he's Sounds a pure like athlete. Gronk. Like I, I probably if if they had not signed uh, Gronk, athlete, you just listed off everything that you could list off for Gronk. So what? I no, mean, no, 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 no. I didn't. The difference no. between I'm not Gronk and OJ Howard is same. that Gronk is a fucking animal. Like yeah, the guy's like huge. a car. Like physically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, OJ Howard has got nothing on prime Gronk from like a physicality standpoint. Like you know, you there are a lot of highlight reels out there. Gronk just dragging guys like thirty yards down the field. And then O.J. Howard's just dropping balls because he hears footsteps, you know. That, that, that too. And, you know, Gronk had uh, quite the set of mitts on him. Now, to be fair, to be fair, physically, he was only 15 pounds down on Gronk. Okay. Yeah. Same height. I didn't know that. Yeah, 6'6", 242. But Gronk you don't. 6'6", 265. Alex I mean, is right. You don't see, difference. like, you don't yeah, see. Yeah, I, I don't. I think Gronk is, see. like, it, you, that, that's like a generational athlete. Like, you know, he's one of those dudes that was too strong for his own body. So you think O.J. Howard's more so like a uh, Zach Ertz kind of guy compared to then? No, no, I mean, like. He doesn't compare it to anyone good. I don't know. O.J. Howard, guy. one thing is not like the other here. I think Howard's he could good. compare it to like a Jared Cook sort of guy. <gasps> Jared Cook. He's a good athlete. He can pick up yards after the catch. He can break a few tackles. He's not going to go straight up Gronk on somebody. But... Well, fair. Speaking of Jared Cook, uh, I got him ranked at what, two? Uh three. Three. I thought about putting Gronk at two. I just I I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, it was kinda like a and, and I think shot. the talent's still there. It's just the health. I think that year off could have been very good for him health wise. But you know, we're just not sure. There's a lot of uncertainty there. And Jared Cook, like very quietly had a pretty solid year last year. So he did. I mean didn't most of his production, uh, maybe incorrect, did most of his production come off touchdowns or no? Probably a solid amount of it. But yeah. I don't yeah. know. I'm pretty sure he was like the seventh ranked tight end or something like that in half point PPR leagues. He was somewhere around there. Probably. I just. And plus, he was pretty, pretty. Yeah. Which most tight ends usually get hurt, let's be honest here. He only missed two games, though, but yeah. Sure, yeah. Ankle sprain, but. Um, I was going to say, I like Adam Troutman a lot, and it's like I'm kind of scared to put Jared Cook up there because, like, Jared Cook could definitely beat out Rob Gronkowski in fantasy points this year, but I like Adam Troutman and the fact that the Saints, show, like, did that big trade. Like, they traded half their draft away for this this player. I mean, it's kind of like it goes to show, like, they like the guy too, you know. Yeah, Troutman's a solid sleeper for me if you're in, like, a, a dynasty. For sure. Yeah, if you're just in a dynasty league. I know we're mostly talking redraft. That's why he's six, just because rookie tight ends normally don't blow up the league. But I think he's a guy that could find himself producing a little bit this year, maybe a lot in coming years. Situationally, I mean, he probably has the best situation of all rookie tight ends, honestly. And he could possibly – I could see him, like, a blow up in the back half of the season isn't out of reach for me. I mean, obviously, rookie tight ends, you've said they don't really produce, and they don't, but – in the situation he's in with Drew Brees and Sean Payton. And I, I feel like they, if they really wanted to use him at the back half of the year, 
like say Jared Cook gets hurt, he'll find a way to use him and he'll definitely have a fantasy impact. If Cook gets hurt, I think he's I, I would imagine he'll be rosterable. Oh yeah, for sure. But playable. I mean playable I think you have could to be. You have to, could be. I mean like you got what was he, like fourth round or like late third or something like that? I'm pretty sure he was fourth. Yeah. So like you don't have sky high expectations, but like he's a good athlete, so we've seen the Saints use their athletic tight ends to do shit before. And then there's Hayden Hurst. You guys have him at one. Ooh, yes. Flying all in, right? Big I'm Hayden Hurst away. fan. Yeah. I think he showed flashes in Baltimore. He was just, like, behind everybody. He just happened to be behind Mark Andrews. So that – and Nick Boyle was a better blocker, I, I guess, which is why he was third string. I think the Falcons probably wouldn't have traded a second-round pick for him if they didn't believe in him. True. Like, I'm that is – of- like, that is a decent amount of draft capital they spent on this guy. And, like, Austin Hooper left a lot of targets behind him. And keep in mind this man was a first-round pick, which is actually – Yeah, I mean, he's fan. got talent. And, like, yeah. you, you've you seen it in, like, the what, like two years he was in Baltimore. He's got receiving talent. Yeah, I mean, efficiently and this past year, too. He's pretty efficient. I mean, 2 point Now, like, he, he should have run. that – he should have that tight end role, I would imagine. So, I'm a big Hayden Hurst believer. Yeah, high volume passing offense. Yeah, I clear think he's, indicator he's going to perform. Obviously, I he's mean, a good athlete. Yeah, I am expecting success, and if there's not, I would be very upset. Personally, call the Falcons to talk about it. Now he does have a. Uh, he only had two contested targets last year, and he dropped both of them. So I mean, there is no really sample yeah. size mm. on his contested catch ability, but. Oh, uh, well. His true catch rate is sixth of all tight ends, and obviously sample size is pretty small as well. But I mean, it's pretty something that stands out. Just hoping he gets gonna, open. Yeah. He's gonna have to drop. A believer. I'm also an Ian Thomas believer. I'm, I'm hoping this is the year that they finally let him play. I got nothing to say about Ian Thomas. I mean, he's athletically good, good offense. Yeah. He's You've seen flashes of him. So. Occasionally. Well, the problem yeah. is that Rod Rivera just refused to play the guy. I mean, Who even last year, started? I don't even know the guy's name. It's Chris something. It started with an M. I think it's Man Hurts. Yeah, it's Man Hurts. Yeah, it was something like that, and they just played him over Ian Thomas. Like, I I don't really know why. You'd have to ask Ron Rivera that. And he only got one target last year. Yeah. Sad, yeah, sad, he sad. was still playing. Now, I'm hoping that Joe Brady, you saw LSU tight ends get involved in the passing game, so I'm hoping Joe Brady can use that. Now, free my man Ian Thomas. Let and, you know, fly. check down Charlie with uh, yeah. Bridgewater. Noodle arm, I guess you could call him. Is that reasonable? Yeah. It's got that yak ability. I'm yeah. Cool. I guess uh, we're cool on tight ends. I'm chilling. Yeah, I'm about summarized it. Let's hop into those DEFSs, shall we? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Anybody want right, to talk what? about? What? Go what? ahead. All right. So, we recognize Buccaneers – had really good rush defense, yada yada. I think I believe it was brought up earlier. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they got rid of a quarterback who threw thirty interceptions and brought in a very conservative, traditional pocket passer, and will not turn over the ball thirty odd times. And I, I, I don't know. I. I, I I believe in both the Saints and the Buccaneers defense and I recognize that the Saints have added some some key good defensive players, but uh I'm looking at the offensive changes of the Buccaneers and I don't think the Saints made up the ground that the Bucks did. Yeah. I don't think the Buccaneers are going to be an extremely run heavy team and also I don't think Shaquille Barrett is gonna lead the NFL in sacks again. Yeah, that's fair. That's kind of my thinking. I think they'll be a good, like, defensive option, but I, the Saints have proven themselves to be pretty solid over these past few years, and they added talent on defense. Wait, that's who did they add on defense? Saints. Added Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. Malcolm Jenkins, yeah, yeah. Didn't you say I you think, didn't like him last year, though? I didn't like – what? I feel like I feel like this was brought up. Or I feel like – no, no, it was something with the Eagles, and the Eagles lost Malcolm Jenkins. Either you said you agreed with it, I guess – no, I agreed with them letting him walk because of the contract he wanted. 
All right. Yeah. And like I, I think his his play is slipping a little bit, which isn't to say that he's bad now because he's still a valuable player. Yeah. I just think that was a business decision they had to make. They had to make. He's Fair. still good. He's not like he doesn't so much have like the deep safety range that he had in previous years, but like as a yeah. strong safety that can play like up at the front and like be a very versatile player. He's still pretty solid. That's a good influx of talent there. They've they've got like elite talent at all levels. You know, you're talking like Marcus Williams, very solid player at safety. They've still got Lattimore. They've got Demario Davis still. They've still got Cam Jordan. Maybe Davenport takes a step forward. I don't know. I don't really know much about him other than they traded up to get him. Is Kiko Alonso still there? Or is he no? I I think he is. I know Anzalone, that was one of the Saints players with blonde hair. I don't know if he's still there. And I don't even think he was decent. But I, honestly, half the time when I do these rankings for defenses, I don't even pay attention to players that are on there. And then I think about it, and I'm just like, eh. I, I just kind of look at the depth charts and look at how they did last year and just kind of go from there. I mean, like, when they have players like Marshawn Lattimore and stuff, like, I know that, like, just it sticks out to me. But, I mean, everything else, like the linebackers, I know DeMar Davis is on there. That marks that important, but – like everything else is just like is a blur to me. I mean, they've had they have like solid interior pass rushers, and Cam Jordan is still playing at a high level. So Cam Jordan, yeah. I'd take mainly game script into this, honestly. Game script and like just snaps, like the amount of time they're spending on the field, their offensive like ability. Obviously, Brandon Brandon had a good point, honestly, with the Buccaneers, like with Brady coming in instead of Winston, the fucking sheriff over there. But I mean. However, like, if there's still a high-volume passing offense, that that's still going to lead to more time that the defense is on the field, even if I, it's not due to turnovers. I, I agree, but – I don't think they're going to be an extremely run-heavy team. Now, the I Winston thing will help. But. I agree, yeah, I agree. But, I mean, they're going to run more often, more likely due to the fact that – Conservative. Like, because just, like, yeah. think about it this way. Like, Winston throws two – two interceptions, and they're down 14-0 real quick. So they're going to have to pass. But, like, say Tom Brady leads into the end zone for two straight touchdowns, they yeah. didn't score. So then they, like, I think they running. still – like, Bruce Arians seems like he's an aggressive type of guy. Yeah. I don't know if they'll, like, totally do a 180 on changes there. But, honestly, I, I think both of them are starting caliber defenses. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's a huge gap for me between New Orleans and Tampa. And I, I don't think – I don't think the decisions – solely going to be on Bruce Arians. I think Brady is going to have a a say in this this relationship. Fair. Yeah, sure, but I doubt Brady wants to hand the ball off every single time. I no, doubt he but wants I to think throw he's, his arm out, though. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to be – that's what I mean by conservative. I mean, Winston throws – however many deep passes a game, I don't, I don't think Brady's going to throw that many. And the ones he does, I think, will be. I don't really know what to expect because it's been a while since Brady has had the outside, like the, the weapons that he's going to have. Yeah. Like there are no Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in, in, in New, New, England, New England, and there haven't been any time lately. Well, besides the top two, um, do you two have anything else to say about those looking, two? Looking at the rosters, the depth charts for both of these teams, like they're not very great. I went with the Panthers because that's what my gut told me to. I got nothing else to say about it. Falcons, only because uh, Desmond Trufant was injured. I think it was like nine games, six, nine games last year. I they think. replaced him with like Eli Apple or some shit like that. Yeah, someone you don't want to have in a game. <laughs> so, so I, I don't think either defense is bad, but Panthers just lost Luth. Luke Keekley and I mean they gained a, a pretty good defensive lineman through the draft I believe first round pick but I yeah that was it's not awesome. making up for Luke Keekley and I think Falcons gaining true font back hopefully a didn't, healthy didn't cast true of font players sign I'm pretty sure true font left though did he leave yeah they cut him. they cut him I swear to god I just looked this up today no they <laughs> cut him I'm pretty sure didn't he sign for Detroit he met, yeah, 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 I think so. I'm sure, he went to the Lions. So, good, Brandon. Fact check this. So I don't think Trufant yeah, yeah. is saving the Falcons. Okay. 
I also took the Panthers just because their front four looks no, better than the that. Falcons. The Falcons' <laughs> two defensive ends, according to ESPN, are some guy named Alan Bailey and Tack McKinley, who is a bust. I'm not sure where I came up with the. I, I swear I looked it up, and somewhere I saw he was still with the Falcons. And I looked it up specifically because I thought he left. But oh, somebody live and we learn. I must have looked at the wrong thing. Honestly. Both these defenses are not good, though. So you're not. Yeah. You're not stuck. So either way. In my individual note sheet, I mean, I had the Panthers at three and the Falcons at four, and I didn't even look at it. I just went off the top of my head in the defensive uh, slides. So I just. Honestly, I ain't got much to say about them. They were just there. There's not really a lot to say about it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess that about wraps the uh, the fantasy football content up. We still got a question, don't we? I don't do we declare. It? I think I it's d- your turn, Ed. My turn? I bet, no? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Question time. Question time. Question time. I do declare. I do declare. Right, I don't know why you keep saying that. I don't, but know. I don't know what that is. It uh, needs to continue to happen. I don't think it should. We can make it a thing. Let's make it a thing. Yeah. It's going to become a thing. I do declare. And jumps declare. in. Question. Here we question. go. Here we go. Question That's time. How we know. Right. So, what is your guys' uh, alcohol of choice, I guess, would be the question. Vodka. Figured that was going to be a straight shoot right there. Yeah. <laughs> You I choose to have more depth with my alcohol. I'll do, I'll do more of that stuff that made Brandon, like, disgusted last time no. he was here. Was, <laughs> the hot alcohol sauce mixed in hot sauce, yeah. <laughs> right, I took a sh- it was like half vodka, half Frank's Red Hot. I'm telling you, it's not bad. My face would catch on fire. Yeah, It's not I bad would. at all. I gave them to my roommates. My roommates were fans as well. I would hit the bathroom real quick. I'm, it's not bad. It like it takes all like yeah. I mean it's kind of spicy. It's half hot sauce. That's how this works. But like it takes yeah. all of like. Think. There's no aftertaste of like alcohol. It's just hot sauce. And you're talking to someone who likes hot sauce, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm a buffalo sauce kind of guy. You could do it with buffalo sauce. I don't see why not. Right. All it right, depends. So here's, here's it depends on uh, the mood I'm feeling. I'm. If I'm feeling cheap, I just want something to drink and to, I mean, get drunk. I'm just going to drink uh, Rolling Rock. Uh, and then if I'm feeling like just I'm chilling, sitting by the pool or something, Angry Orchard, great way to go. Uh, uh, I like uh, you got the green apple, green apple the ang- uh, summer ale. Um so, yeah, rosé is pretty two. good. The rosé, I just uh, I had one a few years ago, and I didn't think I liked it, but then I had one again, like, just a few weeks ago, and I liked it. Yeah. I can't I can't drink those apple things anymore. What's that? I, I had a night, um, I forget what they were. It was, I don't, it wasn't Angry Orchard, it was a different, it was a different brand. Ah, shit, what are they? Like Cider Boys or something? No, no, it was another like pretty common one. Fuck, dude, I don't remember what. Oh, uh, uh, red apple ale. Uh, yeah, it might have been something like that, but it was um, I yeah, I went over to my like buddy's place at their apartment, and he got a case of like these like eight percenters of these apple ones. Actually, I think it was a variety pack. Like, it was a bunch of different fruity ones, which is why those make me nauseous now. And like we cruised through that case and like. Not a lot of time. <laughs> Talking like 10, 20 minutes. It was, it was, it was a rough day. Like I, I went over there to let go. And while I let go of everything in my stomach, I probably threw up 30 times that day. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. I, I laid, I laid in the bathroom from 1030 to 5 in the morning. Wow. And, like, now it's just – now I, I try to drink those things, and my body's like, whoa there, buddy. What are you thinking? <laughs> what do you think? The taste aversion. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a soft kind of drink like that, to be honest. Like the apple ales and twisty Same teas, here. like a little college drink, yeah. And it's just if I'm just if I'm delicious. drinking vodka or rum, which I I, I like. Uh I don't like sh- I, I like shots, but I don't like shots. I can't I can't really 
take the whole shot. I'm just, I, just I don't enjoy I, it. That's the thing. Yeah, it's I like, like shots I would, because they're I just could, quick and easy. But I'm not feeling good about it, and then I feel sick after. And yeah. it's, I'd rather take like three fourths of a shot, and I feel just as fine. But no, rum and coke, Captain Morgan. It's great. I love it. I That's I don't like. I like, I don't like quantity like that because, like, it's just too easy to take it, like, overboard. Brandy, you remember when we were at the beach last year and we went to Dunkin' Donuts and, like, they didn't have that thing that I wanted, so I settled for that, like, blue raspberry, like, icy. That thing? Oh. Yeah, yeah well, I took, like, two sips out of it, and I was like, okay, I hate this. So I filled it, like, halfway with vodka, and, like, <laughs> that – that just ended up being a bad idea because then by like 1130 I was plastered was like <laughs> I can't tell how much I'm drinking I mean, with I shots it's easy you that. <laughs> like you take you take a couple shots you're like all right I'm good for a little but that thing I just kept drinking it and then like by one o'clock I like don't know where I'm at <laughs> shots are a lot easier to keep track of and yeah they don't taste good that's kind of the idea yeah Makes you reconsider. You're like, man, do I really need another one of those? No, I don't think I do. But, you know, if I got this blue raspberry cup of like a mysterious amount of alcohol and it tastes fine, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Keep the rest going. of that. Yeah. And like that's how you end up like throwing up in a bathroom for seven hours. <laughs> Never thrown up while drunk. Great times. I went to work that next day. It was awesome. <laughs> Whenever I feel stomach ache going on, oh. Going to bed, everyone. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> like the cats. Every single I have time. Thrown up like high quantities twice. The other one was Jaeger. I, Jaeger is also shaky for me. But that yeah. that one was absolutely my fault. Did like eight consecutive shots of Jaeger in a span of three and a half minutes. Yeah, that sounds like a you problem. Yeah, I mean, it ended about how you might expect it to. And I'm good. guessing yeah. being in, that you're a kiwi and all, you probably can't take that much. Yeah. Uh, out one end, out the other. Right. I mean, <laughs> I I don't know what a kiwi would look like if you dumped eight shots of Jaeger into it, but it probably wouldn't look good. Yeah. That's why yeah. you should never drink in the same room as your ex girlfriend. Oh shit. Then <laughs> you look over and you're like, wow. Was your ex girlfriend a strawberry? Oh. <laughs> Uh, what's like the worst? T- you know, no, 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 no. A kiwi? Was it like a kiwi and a kiwi? Is that what it was? It was a kiwi and a kiwi. I I would say it was more like, like in terms of probably close. I don't know what's the worst fruit possible. Hmm. Hmm. They all appear probably pretty. like prunes or plums. I hate those things. True. They got right, that throw in the garbage and let it marinate for like six weeks. Oh. And then pull it out. That's how I feel about that. Well, well, well. <laughs> it is diary time. When first choice. Well, well, that's why you probably felt sick. <laughs> so you're sitting next to a prune. Oh yeah, that's six basking weeks old. in trash for <laughs> six weeks. Because <laughs> yeah, all the Jaeger to remind my to forget about what I was thinking. That's fair. Well, uh, anybody else got any comments, questions, concerns? No, I'm going to leave my people bashing for off camera. Where, yeah, do that. All right. So uh, I guess we'll have the next episode of the Running Backs episode up on Wednesday. And uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Do all of them. Something. Every single one of them. This is uh, First Choice Fantasy signing out. Well, later on. Peace.